Howdy guys, this is Corkat13, I'm a woman with a deep voice, and we are back with more Underhero. Alright, last video of the session. And I get to go to bed, yay! <laughs> nah, I'm joking. I've been having a lot of fun. Apparently they are having an issue hanging out on top. They're not allowed to climb the stairs. Anyway. Uh, last episode... I really should have talked about what we were doing last episode. Um, last time we left off here in Underhero, we gathered the first couple of bosses in the game and made final preparations for the Hero's Road, which is the final test of the game. Now it is time to do said test. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this is the part of the game that I was kind of afraid of the most. Mainly one section, which would be the section based on World 5, or not World 5, we're in World 5, World 3. Because that one's a lot more labyrinthian than most things in the game. It can be a little bit annoying, but anyway. Secret passage to the right. Do not let the hero see you. Our home defense. <laughs> okay. And look at that. We got a new track to go along with it. How about that? Alright, well, there's no turning back now. By the way, this would be where the hero actually was supposed to go through. But because we are awesome and technically fight here. Um, yeah, we get access to the secret passage. It's pretty awesome. And yeah, I just kind of ran past the dialogue, which I'm sure part of it will be funny, but I wanted to get this treasure chest. It was a cassette, and I wanted it, and it was awesome. Alright, so from here on out, Battles are actually kind of optional. Like, you actually don't have to fight anybody. And, um, yeah, you can just kind of bypass it because every single enemy that you fight here is a clone of you. And they're honestly not really worth fighting, other than some funny dialogue. And they also give only 10 EXP, so, yeah. But I'm gonna show them off anyway. So, I'm gonna cut you down to size, and there we go. Yeah, as you see, only 10 EXP. They ain't worth it. In my opinion, just pay them off. That's way easier to deal with. And Bella, I did not say you could leave. We're in it together, girl. I don't know why it automatically, like, puts Bella back in your pocket. It's kind of annoying. This part right here reminds me of the original Super Mario Brothers. Just a little bit, though. Alright, there we go. Found a platform. Alright, so now we gotta wait on platforms to rise and fall. This part's more tedious than it's hard. <laughs> Man. Now I really want to play the original Super Mario Brothers again. Like, good lord. That's a fun-ass little NES game. Also, Glitch. I just want to see what was up here. Look at that. We're getting all kinds of things from across the entire adventure. Including vines! Yay, my favorite obstacle. I was about to say, where's the platform? <laughs> Blair was just like kind of floating there for a second. They were like, uh, can I please have a platform? I would really like a platform, please. <laughs> That's kind of the scariest part about this area is the fact that platforms are not exactly plentiful. And it's kind of, it's more of a bit of a waiting game. It's not hard, just tedious, like I said. But once you figure out the timing of the platforms, it's not that bad. Or you could be like me and be cheap. 
I have a hood and I know how to use it. So the platform almost made me not use it. That crap. Very well. There's a convenient vine. Gotta respect the vines. Oh crap, we're up. Are these things poisoned? That's dumb. Alright. Thank god I still have some elixirs. Or antidotes, that's what they're. I don't know why I called them elixirs. I guess I'm thinking of Chrono Trigger. I gotta play Chrono Trigger again. Like, I've still not gotten far in the game. Honestly, Sea of Stars is another one I need to get back into. But it's like, part of me wants to wait until I do a Let's Play on Sea of Stars, just simply because I can never know. The fuck? Huh, there's a secret passage up here. That's interesting. I did not know that. I learned something that my past self did not know. Again, the magic of doing a Let's Play. You get to learn things. And this part right here is a bit of a maze. Kind of like that part in Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. I really don't want to fight you. Please go away. Go, go over there, please. There we go. Okay. Anyway, somewhere to the Thousand Year Door, there's just a maze of doors that'll take you in and out. And if you go down the wrong one, well, I'll just spit you right back out the first door you entered. So, that's fun. Alright, and this one right here will warp you over here to the key. Which will take us to the next section of the dungeon. I have become the first hybrid of dungeon and man. Gotta love those Earthbound references. God, I want to play Earthbound again. Like, that's such a fun game. Somehow I managed to dodge those guys. Look at that, I got a silver key. How special. Ah, uh, well, I guess I'm fighting this guy. I guess I can show off what they do. Basically, their cue is that they will... Well, first of all, they'll do that. They have a shield that they can activate whenever they want. And your cue is to wait for them to cock their punch. And then right before they smack you, you uh, hit the shield button and it will repel their punch. Like that. Yeah, like I said, these guys are really nothing. They're pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not fighting you. Enjoy the money. You get to live. And I get to steal your EXP. <laughs> yeah, I forget that you can do that. Like, you can just avoid battles. That was weird. Like, it triggered the fight, but then the dude just ran away. <laughs> I mean, it's not the first glitch I've actually encountered in this game. Um, actually, during my um, Under Hero playthrough on the Steam Deck, I actually ran into a pretty interesting little glitch. Where, for whatever reason, um, the battle would not trigger correctly, and I was kind of stuck in the uh, descending pose. So essentially, I was kind of soft locked for a while. And I was still pretty far away from a save point, so. Needless to say, it was almost pretty bad. Also, I don't want to talk to you. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Yeah, there we go. Yee, coins. Always good to have. 
especially when you're trying not to fight. I guess you could almost say this is the pacifist part of the route. Because technically, you could actually just not fight anybody and just pay them off. Which, that's actually a pretty good incentive to get money in this game. It's just uh, dodge enemies, but... Then you wouldn't be able to get upgrades, which I think is a bit more worth your time, so... Anyway, I'm just gonna keep hopping. So, if you actually go between those trees there, there's actually some money waiting for you there. Pretty neat. Alright. And now we have a choice of doors. One's locked. Let's go through this one. It looks like the music faded a little bit. Interesting. Alright. More shrooms! Yeah, you'll notice that each part of the dungeon here is actually like... It, it's essentially just a kind of best of compilation from your past encounters with each of the worlds. Like, this is World 1, so the next part of the dungeon is going to be World 2, and so on and so forth. It's, it's actually pretty cool. I like it. I wish more dungeons actually did that, where they actually incorporated different parts of the game's worlds. Oh yay, more of those. My, my favorite. Alright. Right, I gotta move fast. Woo! At least they're not like swamps in the future, like in the later 3D Mario games where it'll just automatically kill you. I thought that was a platform there for a second and realized it was a shroom. Woo! Just barely dodged that. Who I tell ya. A lot of close calls in this dungeon, I'm just gonna say that right now. Lots and lots of close calls. Look at that, we activated a platform. What must it be like to ride on those kind of platforms? I don't know, because we don't have anything equivalent to it in the real world. Well, actually, I think we do. Don't we? I don't remember. I don't know, I don't get out much. This is very strange music. This is probably some of the weirdest music in the entire game. The, uh, Funky Remix is what they're called. Essentially, they're just parts of the uh, main game's areas, like the mansion or the uh, volcano or whatever. In this case, it's actually the Great Boggly Tree, or Deku Tree, as I so eloquently put it. Although, I guess with the mushrooms and stuff, it would be a lot more like the Boggly Tree, now that I think about it. And considering the fact that the next major Let's Play I'm doing is Thousand Year Door, I should have freaking referenced that. Yeah, well. I guess this would also explain the high amount of platforms here. I mean, this is definitely the most platform heavy of the um, major areas. Because World 3 is going to be more puzzle oriented, and Area 2 is very much focused on, like, lanterns and trying to navigate in the dark, so... Yeah, like I said, I, I like that it takes little aspects from every world, but does something new with them. I'm looking at my globe right now, and it has a fedora, and it looks so funny. Alright, now we get a bit of a puzzle here. Alright, so we need to raise this one. Right here. We need to lower this one here. Raise this one up. And have this one just on screen. There we go. This one needs to be raised just a hair. That way we can get it on the platform. Oh boy. 
They're just kind of warped. That's funny. Also, yes, you are saying this right. There is snow here, so... Any fuck-up jump? Yeah, you're not recovering from that, so just be warned. My glasses are driving me crazy. I swear you really do need to be at, like, the apex of your jump. Hmm. Maybe I need to raise this one just a hair more. There we go. There we go. That should theoretically do it. Yeah, and by the way, there's a thing magic there in case you are ever so inclined. But because we have um, snow here, we're not going to be able to levitate ourselves over there. Which is rather unfortunate, but whatever. Gotta grab all the moolah. And dodge enemies that look like me. You know what? I bet you're nothing more than number zero. Another music cassette. Sweet. We get more tunes. Not that it matters, because we're getting close to the end of the game, so anyway. Alright. Now we're in the second half of the dungeon. Or the second third of the dungeon. <sighs> I'm getting a bad feeling we're not going to be able to get to uh, part three of the dungeon. Alright. Now we're inside of an artificial forest. This is actually probably my favorite of the remixes. I honestly really like it. It's very... like, ominous, but also just neat and calm. I don't know. I like it a lot. Then again, it's a remix of my favorite of the tracks for the overworld, so yeah. Dun 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 That ah, crud. Oh well, saved by a tree branch. Thank God. All right, now this part right here just reminds me of Mega Man. Particularly the uh, Sega Genesis version of the original Mega Man. Like, if you guys have ever played the Gutsman stage in that version, it is definitely a lot harder because um, the timing on it is a lot stricter. So yeah, have fun with that. I mean, I've kind of figured out how it works. But I still die quite a bit, just simply because of my own impatience. Whew! Saved by a branch. Just like the forest. This would be both ominous, but just so awesome to run around in. Like, a, essentially a pseudo-forest. Just so neat. It's like climbing a Christmas tree. If, you know, it were spooky. Oh man, that thing is moving! At least that thing is on the move, as opposed to the ones in Area 1, which were moving at a fucking snail's pace. Oh god. Ah! Man, that was a long fall. Are you okay, Blair? Please come back, platform. Thank you. I don't like waiting on my branch. Okay, so there was something interesting I had noticed about myself whenever it came to um, playing this game and just RPGs in general. 
I find it way more difficult to talk over dialogue scenes and stuff than I do whenever I'm just talking over, like, the main overworld stuff. It's freaking bizarre. Like, I don't know, it always feels like I'm interrupting a conversation or whatever, and, like, in my mind, it always just feels like, oh, crap, I'm interrupting a conversation and shouldn't say anything, but at the same time, just, like, I have to narrate, you know, what they sound like in my head, so, I don't know. Is anybody else like that? I guess it just kind of comes with my own social anxiety, so... Ah, crap. Really, platform? You couldn't have saved my ass? And there I go again, falling off the platform, just ever so merrily. Yeah, we're not dying. This is a very simple platforming challenge. I'm just getting really impatient. <laughs> Because I would like to go to bed. Honestly, I actually meant to record all this stuff earlier, but I was kind of procrastinating. And then we had to go to the laundromat, so that kind of delayed me a little bit. Which I needed to clean clothes, so it was a net win, but still. It kind of put a damper on the schedule I had. I was also originally supposed to go in at, like, 3.45, but now I have to go in at 2. Because somebody needed to go home early or something. So it's like, well, guess I'm not getting that much sleep after all. Yeah, well. It is what it is. I'm probably getting some overtime for it, so hey. Not a bad thing. There I go again, fucking falling off that last platform. It's not even a hard platform to land on, it's a platform. I've done this like a hundred times already. I think my hands are just getting tired. Look at that, these two platforms are falling at the same pace. I do find it kind of strange that the longer Blair is standing on the platform, the slower it goes. Basically, it manipulates the speed a little bit. Which, I don't know if that was intentional, or if that was more just a glitch that never got ironed out. I mean, it's interesting, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, it's just a little bit weird. Yay, land on terra firma. This won't be the last time we have to ride on platforms like that, but at least next time, we're going to be able to just, like, rob the platforms. Alright, so let's go ahead and go in here, because this place looks spooky. I think it will be fun. Because, actually, we are going to need fire, so... That was dumb. Alright, so actually, we can't be in here right now, because we're going to need fire in order to unlock the wave over there. So we actually need to go into the left door. Which is this very ominous place. Full of chandeliers! I've only been to a few places that had fucking chandeliers. It's just strange. It's like, oh look at me, I'm so fancy with my chandeliers. This suddenly got spooky. Kind of reminds me of that part in the manor where we were running around in the storage room. And yes, it does seem like... That was weird. It does seem like this room goes on forever, but it actually doesn't. You're actually supposed to run all the way to the end of the room. And yes, that shadow is following you. Don't ask questions. Yay! We have fire! Whew. 
Eh, yeah, boy. It looks like we gotta fight these bozos. So, I'll be right back. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Seriously, it was just a street hallway with nothing in it. I appreciate the time to rest, at least. Oh, hi. Look at that. Our friends are helping us out. Yeah, there really wasn't a whole lot to say about that room. It was just more mass kids that Blair here had to kick the shit out of because they thought they were funny. Apparently some jackass knocked down the chandeliers. Well, good, they were fucking tacky. Let's go on in. You stop on back. Alright. Gonna light the flames. This is a pretty neat puzzle. Basically, she automatically targets the platform, so... The trick is to time it just right. See, that's how you know you have a smart AI. When the character themselves will just automatically go right to where you need them to go. Lots of lovely flames. I think that was odd. For some reason, she didn't light that one. Alright, whatever. Looks like the game wants us to go down here. Grab some more moolah! Gotta have all the money. Hey, Blair's probably smiling ear to ear right now because they're finally getting all the cash they need. Although, what the hell they're gonna do with it, who knows? Ah, such delightful change. It's so pretty. I could just kiss it. <laughs> Fuck your level design! I'll gladly take that key, thank you. Wee. Man, that was fun. Honestly, I think that part was more fun than the uh, one for Area 1. Alrighty. Time to go bye-bye. Whew. Bitter cold. It, it's not quite that fun. Yes, thank you for telling me things. Shut up. Can't hide in the ones with the light, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> I don't want... I'm not fighting you, dude. Get out of my way. Alright. Now it looks like we got more platforms to deal with. Yeah, this part right here can be a little bit tricky. Actually, the next part, too. Alright, so this part can be a little bit weird. You need this to be up high. You need this one to be about here. This one to be on the ground. There we go. Climbing up a platform today. And really getting that glitch where they aren't making good contact with the ground. Oh boy, this puzzle. This puzzle right here forced me to bust out a guide just to figure out how it worked. It's so stupid. You're supposed to hit 1, 2, 4, skip 5, 6, then 7. How the hell somebody is supposed to figure that out, I will never know. The only reason I know now is because I did that practice run, so... E... Now it's time to go up the double helix. Ooh, man. Shit's getting hot now. Alright, might as well refreshify our 
wonderful, wonderful potions. Yeah, might as well grab some water too. Why not? I could use some water right now, let me tell ya. Alright. Yeah, I'll keep her out. And actually, this is a pretty good place to stop, so next time on Underhero, we'll finish the final dungeon and make our way to Mr. Stitches. Also, my battery's saying it needs to charge. Bye.